Hey there guys, what's up? How are you doing? Hope you're doing really well. So we've got another stats breakdown for you. This time we are covering September 15th to September 21. So as usual, seven day period. And at the end of the month, we'll round up the entire month. So let's just get straight into it. Um, the headline numbers here are that we had 75 signals closing in those days. Uh, that works out to be around 11 signals every day, um, which is a, definitely a drop back from what we have seen previously. And I think that's a symptom of the pretty difficult market conditions that we've been seeing these last sort of one or two weeks. Um, but despite that, we had 45 of the signals hitting at least their first target. That's a 60 to 40% split, so 60% winning, 40% going directly to stop loss. Uh, so that's 30 signals going directly to stop loss. I'm not going to lie, this has probably been the most difficult week that we've seen in many, many months now. But despite that, there are there is still some good news. Um, but before that, wanted to just briefly touch on the September sadness. Uh, it is historically the worst month of the year for Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of detail into the blog for you guys. Um, as you can see on the screen here, there's been some news around a report that Kraken put out, um, which is kind of interesting to read. Um, it pretty much confirms that, yeah, to generally Bitcoin will pull back at least or on, or on average uh, 7%. Um, but there is some good news that comes out of it that they feel that at the end of this, uh, it typically has foreshadowed a new bull market. So the last quarter of the year uh, could be setting up for something pretty strong. Uh, I feel it could actually really be very strong as, as long as Bitcoin doesn't pull back too much further. But we'll save the speculation for the, uh, for the news guys and for everybody else. For now, we'll just focus on what the system pulls up and um, the signals that we can come up with. So uh, as I say, I'll put more details about this into the blog for those of you that are interested. Uh, for now, I'm just going to jump back to some of our results. So there is some uh, good news still in here, of course. And let's start with our best trade of the week. That was link down USDT. Now, for those of you that have been paying attention, you'll remember that we published a newsletter and a blog talking about what these up and down signals are and how you can trade them. Um, so it's an interesting one that for those of you that managed to get into the signal, we did manage to hit all four targets. Uh, it took around three days and that was for a peak gain of around 30%, which is great. Um, when you jump onto the blog, you're going to see a chart for this coin. And of course, the, it will look like the price has been going up. Um, but in reality, a down paired signal is actually making money when the asset is going down. So if you pull up the, the link USDT chart, you'll notice that the price was dumping during that period, like a lot of other coins. So fantastic, as I said, that we've managed to jump onto that. In fact, we actually pulled up two link down USD trades, uh, both of which finished in our top 10. I'll come on to that in a moment as well. So if we uh, move on to our final target hit spread percentage, here we can see again immediately that this has been a more difficult week. Um, we can spot immediately here that the higher targets really weren't met very often. Um, it was typically just sort of target one and two that people were probably wanting to focus on for this period. If you pull up the Bitcoin chart, it's very obvious why during this very particular date range, um, Bitcoin was barely moving up, very much just sort of slowly up and sideways, um, doing something that would be called a bearish retest. And as soon as it touched the Fibonacci retracement, golden pocket of the way back up, it was completely smashed back down. So we never had a chance really to reach any of the higher targets in that period. Um, that's just actually the way it goes in trading sometimes. Uh, quite obviously, we could have broken through um, through the resistance and continued on up and had a great time. But that's just not the way it was meant to be for all of us this time. So Bitcoin did end up tanking, and that means we've hit stop loss on quite a large number of trades that were out there. The good news should be for you guys that um, you'll be making use of the break even stop loss. So when a a signal or a trade reaches even just target one, your stop loss moves up automatically to your entry price. 
So even though some of these trades will have been uh, going up and then hitting stop loss, if you've, if you've managed to make use of break even stop loss, you shouldn't have really been taking many, much hits, many hits or much damage, let's put it that way. If you're still not using the feature, um, make sure you look at it. There is plenty of information about what it does and how it works. And as a final reminder, we recently decided that we would make it on by default. And the reason for that is that we know that for some of our members, it can be a little bit overwhelming. There are a lot of uh, options that you could choose and you've got to get your head around trading in general. Um, we wanted to turn it on because I feel like some of the sort of most novice members haven't been, maybe haven't made the best choices, maybe haven't realized that they could or should be using it. Um, so we turn it on by default. Uh, it's important that you check out the information about that because there are downsides to it. You may get yourself knocked out of some trades that you would have rather stayed in. So again, these are your trades, your money, your responsibility. Um, but again, just headline, yeah, we have put that on by default because we want to protect you guys or we would rather you guys focus on protecting your funds instead of chasing large profits. Um, trading is a long-term game you're not going to get rich overnight or, I mean, you could, but you shouldn't aim to. Um, and if you're expecting fantastic results sort of just in a week, two weeks and so on, um, maybe re step back and rethink how you're trying to approach your trading. Um, but yeah, enough lecturing from me on that for now. So this uh, week period, it meant that only 40% of the signals managed to get all the way up to uh, targets two, three or four. Um, that means if we drop down and take a look at the average profit percentages at each of those targets, although there are some nice profits up at target four, 20% average gain, target three, 13, 14% average gain. Uh, these were not reached very often, as you can see, only sort of 10% uh, on either of those. So once again, in a difficult and choppy market, it's typically going to be better to be less aggressive and aim for the lower targets. Target two is always quite interesting. And I think particularly interesting in this week is that the average gain for reaching target two was almost 10%, which I think is probably one of the highest it's been in any of these weekly breakdowns. Um, now, if we look at comparing that to the stop loss value, uh, the loss of say around four or five percent, depending on your entry price, um, that still looks quite appealing. So, so the signals have been generating profitable opportunities. Clearly, this was a much harder environment, though, especially for beginners. Okay, so as I was saying, it has been a more difficult environment, especially for beginners. Um, those of you that maybe aren't used to getting the perfect entry, uh, maybe you're not, again, moving your stop losses manually or you're not using break even stop loss. It's definitely been difficult. Um, but if you were aiming for target two, particularly in this period, it would have meant that, as you can see here again, you would have made that uh, roughly 40% of the time. So that would therefore mean losing 60% of the time. But if you are losing sort of four or five percent, 60 percent of the time and gaining nearly 10 percent, 40 percent of the time, it actually means that if you had played quite carefully, you still would have come out on top. So that's something that's quite important for um, people that are new to trading to understand. You don't actually need to win more of your trades than you lose as long as the math works out. So. Again, the reason we do these breakdowns is so that you guys can think about that and think about how you want to approach things. Um, if I flip that around and let's say you were always just aiming for target one, it would have actually been a complete reversal on the percentages. You would have won 60% of your trades and lost 40%. But on your wins, depending on your entry, and target one can sometimes be close to the top of the entry zone, um, not always, but sometimes. It does mean that you need to get yourself uh, quite a good entry to make a target one strategy work out. But if you had managed to do that, you would have been gaining six, roughly six or seven percent, sixty percent of the time, and losing four or five percent the rest of the time. 
Um, that one is, uh, you know, definitely, I, I think, trickier to pull off unless you can watch the charts and really get that perfect entry. But again, I'm just pointing out that there are valuable ways here of still grinding out some gains, even in a difficult environment. Um, I think that in a choppy market, it's definitely more important that you move away from, say, just the default strategy that you might have been using um, and look at something a little bit more defensive or cautious. And if you need help with that, just reach out. We're planning to release quite a lot of video material this week that will hopefully show you some live trading, how to get a good entry, um, how to do some good housekeeping within the system to prevent unnecessary losses, these kind of things. So we're going to keep doing our best to support you guys um, so that you can get the best results that you can. So last thing to cover though, the guys is as usual, the top 10 trades. As I said before, link down USDT was the favorite. Um, link down USDT did appear again in a slightly different period of time. Um, that trade only lasted two days, but also gained sort of 25%. Just goes to show how heavily link got smashed over this one week period. Uh, we've got Digibyte in there a couple of times as well on the USDT and the Bitcoin version. And uh, yeah, just some different bits and bobs. Nothing particularly interesting this time to talk about. Um, but still, good to see that there were some solid opportunities in there. Um, but as I say, I'm not going to lie, it has been a tough week. And most important takeaway, I think, for this, for those of you that have come away feeling a bit of pain this week is to again really look at how you can develop yourself a more cautious strategy for these periods of time where bitcoin is down in, in a downtrend or is struggling and you should become as much as possible become very aware of bitcoin and what is going on around you you don't need to become a full-time trader but it it is extremely helpful to just generally understand the the sort of bullish or bearish tones of the market um, whilst you're deciding which signals to follow, how much money to put onto each signal and whether you want to be sort of aggressive or defensive and which targets you're particularly trying to aim for. So again, the system is trying to do a good job of really holding your hand. It's giving you a fantastic roadmap to get you from A to B, but you have to make the journey yourself. Um, and I'm hoping that again, these breakdowns and the information we're putting out is making that nice and straightforward, but I appreciate there'll always be a learning curve for the beginners out there. So for now, that's it. And as I said, I look forward to seeing you guys in some more videos this week. And if you are really struggling with anything, just reach out to customer support as usual, and we will try and give you some advice on the system and how things work. Um, we just can't tell you exactly what to do because it is your money, they are your trades and it is your responsibility. So with that said, uh, I wish you the best of luck and I'll catch you maybe in, well, definitely in a week for the next breakdown. And as I say, we'll publish these videos in the next few days. So I'll see you then. Bye.